Hi, in last tutorial or tutorial zero of this series, I explained the scenario or the use case what we are going to implement. So before we move on to the actual implementation tutorial, you must know the basic building block of any project or code base. So I'll talk about the service user session and resource resolver in this tutorial. This is very important and these are the pretty important building block of your project. So basically in AEM to perform any backend operation, whether it's a read operation, write operation, there are two main APIs available. One is Sling or Resource APIs, another one is Java Content Repository or Node APIs. So if you use Sling APIs, you must have Resource Resolver. And to perform any operation using Node related API, you should have Session. So if you are a developer who had already worked on AM 6.0 or earlier version, you must be aware, right? Earlier, we should we had some method to get administrative session or the admin session. But that's, that's implementation has been removed after 6.1 or 6.2. Now, you must have a service user with some specific permissions and then you'll get the resources all over a session from that service user. Even you can use the administrative session, not sure with AM6.5, but that is not recommended at all. That definitely uh, will be removed in your code code review or something or that that comes actually in some tools, reporting tools. So how do you get the resources over in session? So first of all, you should have a service user, service user or sometimes used to call it system user. That user, that is specific kind of user, which have the specific permissions and using this user you get resources all over and then you can use any any method of sling api or the resource api from this resource resolver using adapt to method you get session and from the session once you have session you can perform any operation using the node related api now the important thing is how you create this service user and how you assign permissions to the service user another thing is once you have a specific service user how to get the resource resolver from this service user right once you have resource resolver definitely you can call a matter app to and you can get session that's pretty straightforward but this point this and this these are pretty important thing you must understand this these things are sometimes asking your interview question as well so you you should clear a concept about it there are three important sections or point you must understand about service user. One is how to create service user. Another one is how to add permissions to your service user. Another one is binding. Binding means your service user must be bind to a specific bundle. Let's say means you should create your specific service user for your project. At least you should have one. Definitely you can have more than one. If you are performing a different different options, you can create multiple service user for your different operation but at least you should have one and that service user should be binded to your bundle okay so to create service user and assign permissions there are three ways one is manual you can create service user using crx explorer and then you can go to the acl uh, console and you can assign permission to that I have already explained this in detail. I will add the link of that tutorial in description. Then if you're using ACS Commons, so you have this configuration, OSGI configuration. Using this OSGI configuration, in one step, you just add some configuration and you are done, okay? And the latest thing is repo in it. If you're using AM6.5.5 or later version, you can create service user and assign permissions using repo in it. I have already explained what is repo in it and how exactly it is being used. So I'll add the link of the tutorial in description for this as well. So because I'm not sure what kind of version you guys are using. So in this project, I'll use this approach, right? You should have ACS commons and I'll add, I'll show you actually the configuration and how to do that. Once you are done, you must bind your service user to a bundle. So we use this OSGI configuration, Apache Link Service User Mapper Service to bind service user to your bundle. Let's see how to create a service user using ACS Commons. So you must go to OSGI configuration and you should find ensure service user. This is a factory configuration. 
right you must create another instance of this factory configuration once you are done you can add your name of your service user in principal name if you do like that so what happened it will create this first geeks tutorial and under this folder it will create this user geeks hyphen tutorial hyphen service hyphen user and then you can add permissions what permission exactly you are you supposed to add to this service user so what i'm saying allowed path means it's you say the gcr read all right if i say all that means it's for everything you do not need to write read another one so all permission to content and all permission to slash apps all permission to config so you must assign a specific permission right i have added permission to hold repository but you must assign permissions to specific your site your code base and whatever whatever exactly you need what operations you supposed to perform using this service user so as soon as you save it there will be a service user created in aem okay save it so as soon as you save this configuration a service user x uh, tutorial hyphen service user has been created now how to bind that service user to your bundle so that it can perform operations of your project so you must go to the mapper configuration in this this is also factory configuration and you will see a many instances of this configuration so you see all the required uh, service user has been binded to a specific bundle whatever used in this am instance so you can create or you must create your own instance of this configuration and you should bind your service user to your bundle okay you see here the first one is your bundle id right you you can how to check that bundle id i will explain and then i give a name here and equal to your service user i'll explain why this name why don't you map directly this user okay uh, so let me open the bundle if you are not sure how to get bundle id this is geeks tutorial and whatever you see here geeks dot code you can add that as a bundle id okay and as as you say your service user has been binded to your bundle now you are done as per the configurations and you must have these configurations in your code base so i will explain that as well so if you check this code base this this project has been created using r type 26 so if in r type 26 configuration are stored 26 or later uh, uh, in the latest r type the configurations are stored in a separate folder for the module right in earlier versions this uh, configuration were there in apps itself so if you see i created a configuration here and i added all this information right, in project and this is the mapper so we map the same thing here basically the configuration are stored as a as a part of your code base so now your service user has a specific permission so now you should get resources over using this service user so you have to write few lines of code so first you have to create a map hash map and hash map you must add a resource resolver factory dot subservice right in that you have to add your service user if you see here you must notice here what i'm adding here is not exactly the service user but what did i use to map your service user to your bundle let me open that one more time here okay you see here so i did not use actual service user but i used this what the actual the string I use to map it here. So the advantage of this is even your developer also does not know what is the actual service user. They are using just a proxy of that, right? So you must create a hash map. In hash map, you should put a key value pair. Key is your resources or your factory and the subservice and whatever the, the name you use to bind it. Once you are done, from resource resolver factory get service resource resolver and pass this hash map to it 
and you are done you got this resource resolver so now it's a, this this is the just three lines you have to you know uh, write to get resource resolver now there must be a question right i'm passing resource resolver factory as a parameter it's not necessary you can you know get resource resolver factory here and you just pass it but what i'm doing whenever i need resource resolver i pass resource resolver factory from there it's a personal choice you can just get a reference here of resource resolver factory and just pass it here do not need to pass as a parameter so it's completely your choice so it's a static method so whenever i need it i call this method just with the name of using the name using the class so let me show you how exactly you can get it so when i need resource resolver i call this resolver utils because this is a class and using this i'm getting the method because this was a static method so i can call it by class name okay and i'm passing resource resolver factory so i'm getting resource resolver factory just by the reference uh, annotation you see reference annotation i got this resource resolver and by passing that resource resolver i got it so i'm calling this method new resolver and i'm done so this resource resolver will have permission or the access only whatever the permission the service user had so if you, even if you print the get user id just just print it and see what service id print what user id it prints right once you got the resource resolver you can just do it adapt to uh, if i can show you so you see i got resource resolver and just resource resolver i use adapt to and session so i got session now you have both resource resolver and session now you can perform your backend operation whatever the operation is